if you have an outlet that has a single switch or a single gang, how do you turn it into two switches? Well, that's what we're going to go over today. Welcome to Kyler's studio. This video is all about the box, making the box go from a one switch box or a single gang to a two switch box. If you already have your box in and you're wondering about how to go to a, from a two wire to a three wire because you're installing a fan, there's another video I'll be putting out that explains that in more detail. Caveat, I'm not an electrician, I'm just a DIY, so if you want professional help doing this, feel free to pay somebody else to do it. But it's really not that hard if you're any kind of handy. Before you do anything, find the circuit breaker or breakers that connect to that box and wire test them to make sure that no power is going to the box. If you get a very low voltage reading, that's good. But if you're peaking at a high voltage reading, that means you did not turn off the circuit breaker. So make sure that's off before you touch anything in the box. That's shocking. The reason you want to test all the wires in the box is because of if your switch is off, you may get a high voltage reading from the line coming in, but not the load going out. So make sure Shocking. Enough. nothing shocks me. I'm a scientist. So what you want to do is find a box that's post construction, meaning not new construction, not nailing into the studs, but they have these that have two screws. The screws slide back and forth so you can put it in after the fact. Next thing you want to do is identify which side the stud is on. This box is nailed into a stud and you want to screw the new box into that same stud. Now turn your new box face side in and trace it with a pencil. This is where you're going to need to cut out the sheetrock. You will want to get one of these jab saws if you don't have already. You can use a plunge saw or I started the line using this reciprocating tool. It works great. But if you use the rounded tool, then you can't get the straight edge, so you have to switch to the straight tool. So you can do that. That's a good way to do it. Or the plunge saw usually works just as well. You just have to be careful to make sure not to make the hole too big. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some patching later, and that's what we want to avoid. So use any combination of saws. Just make it as clean and as square as possible, and then you want to pop it out just in case you have insulation or something behind the wall. Then just clean up the corners to make sure you have a good square hole that your box will fit into perfectly. Now comes the frustrating part. How do you get that other box out of the wall? It's a fine line between brute force and precision cutting. I started with vice grips to work the nails out of the stud. Just work it back and forth until you can access the nails to pull them out. The key here is not to damage the drywall, but if you do, you can look at videos on how to patch drywall. It's not that big of a deal. Once you get access to the nails, pull them out of the box. There should be a nail in the top of the box, and if you work it behind the wall, you can pull out the nail at the bottom of the box. Now before you start, you want to take a picture of all the wiring before you tear it apart, and then do just that. Untwist all the wires so they're separated into their individual strands. Now you can try shoving the wires out through the back of the box, but if that doesn't work, you can extremely carefully cut the box apart. I'm not using a lot of pressure here, but if I were to do it again, I would use vice grips to hang onto the box while I cut it. And then just very carefully tear apart the box, being sure not to damage the wires. Be sure to push all the wires as far out of the way as possible, and then just take it very slow and make sure that you don't overcut. This plastic is pretty soft, so it's pretty easy to cut and pretty easy to tear apart with some pliers. Now is the time to organize all your wires, make sure they're in straight lines. If you have new Romex lines where all the wires are in the sheathing, those are easy to plug in. That's what this is designed for. But if you don't have enough to cut off, then you're just going to very carefully have to stick them in one by one. Just make sure they all stay together. Now, if you added a new Romex cable, be sure that it's anchored inside the wall before you put the wall box in. And then it's just a matter of working all the wires and the sheathing for the Romex inside the box. Now, after you've made sure it fits, very gently hammer the box into the wall until it's flush with the sheetrock. Now you can slide the panel to make sure it aligns up perfectly with the stud and screw it into the stud. And now you can work with all your wires as if it was an original box. If you found that helpful, be sure to subscribe, and if you like my style of videos, check some other ones out.